Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Inside the War Room, War Room Sports TV, of course, brought to you by War Room Sports. Uh, I'm one of your hosts. I'm Dev McMillan. I'm at the round table with my brothers uh, this evening, and we're here to talk with you guys just for a few minutes about something that we really don't want to talk about, but, you know, we, we felt that we had to come spit some bars about the situation that's going down, as you all know. Um, on Sunday morning, Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gigi and seven other people all perished in a helicopter accident. Um, I guess I just didn't want to hear, but I'm here with my brothers, man. Uh, let them know who's in the building with me. What's up, people? This is Jimmy at JW The Blueprint. You know what I'm saying? Not, not even looking forward to this conversation, but it is what it is, man. The hot block commander, B. Austin, War Room Sports. Not sure why the camera's not on me, but uh, as my brother so eloquently stated, man, sad times, man. Yeah, definitely. Sad times. Definitely sad times, man. You you know, you get up, you go about your day. Um, you know, we do this. You know, these, these, these athletes and uh, sports figures in general, even sports media figures, like these are the people that we see – talk to cover every day um you know this one particularly hit hard i know i can speak for all of us like we watch this dude grow like he's in our age group like we watch this dude kind of separate from where we all were together in the same region of the country and just become one of the greatest basketball players of of all time and you and you get up and you go about your day and then you hear some news like this. Um, this is one of those things, fellas, I think you're going to remember exactly where you were, you know, when you heard it. Um, you're going to know exactly what you were doing that moment and that day. Um, kind of like, you know, when, when somebody like Michael Jackson died. And I, I heard that news reported by the same outlet too early, TMZ. Um wow. You wait for the, the reports that, that confirm it, you get the confirmation, and then the rest of your day is just like, like everything's just so surreal. Like, Kobe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I want to touch on that, too, because, you know, and, and I'm, not, I'm not necessarily knocking uh, TMZ for what they do and who they are. Um, I don't think they get enough credit. Uh, I don't think that people really give them the credibility that they deserve for what they do um, because of the way they go about it at times. Yeah. Right. But um, I mean, they're, they're legit, but I've heard reports that they released that story and that news before Kobe Bryant's family and, and his wife knew about it. Like they learned about his death via social media and that, that really bothers me. Like, it really, really bothers me for some reason. And and I think, you know, in the society we live in, this is the new normal, so to speak. Um, but there's something wrong with that. And 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 I don't blame TMZ. I I, I you know, they're they're not, you know, this is more of a uh 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 don't hate the player, hate the game sort of thing. So I'm not shooting a shot at them per se or anything. You hating the you hating the game. Yeah, I'm hating the game, man. I, I got to hate the game. <laughs> now it's going. How, how – put it in – put put yourself in, in, in their shoes, you know, from an empathy perspective. How would you like to find out that your mm. wife, Pat, perished and it comes to you through TMZ or even worse, through social media reports second who's and third. reporting hand, off of TMZ. Who's yeah. reporting off of TMZ. You know what, like, though? It, it, like you said, you though, know? it's that, like, you got to hate the game. Um because I was thinking about this, and obviously this is the situation that made me think about it. I don't think there's any way around at this point. Because if TMZ didn't exist, there'd be somebody at the scene who would have put it out. Like, information travels so fast in 2020 right. that right. I don't know if there's any way around that, like, that piece we're talking about. Um, yeah. To Dev's point about what Kobe uh, meant to us, it's a little – and everybody has a Kobe story. I got, I got homies in L.A., and they all got a Kobe story by meeting him in person, but – and I've shared my Kobe story on our podcast, The War Room, every Thursday, 6 to 8. I share my story several mm -hmm. times about – We got um, the same one. It's the, it was like – Yeah, yo, about like Kobe. Kobe is, Kobe is the reason I got like money to go to college, right? And I say that because um, 
no matter how good you are in basketball in Philly. Yeah, 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 yeah. We all used to. Yeah, you feel like you're going to the league, right? You could be in <laughs> high school averaging like three points and five boards. Yeah, but in your, yeah. In, the ball is life. In, in, yeah, somehow, ball is life. I was definitely going. In your head somehow, you're going to the league. And I never forget, as a junior in the summer league circuit, right, you know, so you play AAU, well, AAU, what's just total response, Sunny Hill, Conchalk. So we played all these yes, tournaments. Yes, sir. Conchalk and tournament. And I remember playing against Positive one, image. All those things. I remember playing against Kobe, who um was a freshman as I was a junior, mm-hmm. and I no, saw he, he was one behind us. He was a sophomore. No, no, yeah, he was a sophomore. So he was a sophomore. Okay, mm-hmm. I know I was a junior. That's all I remember. And I remember watching this dude play, and I realized like I got to take my studies more serious because it's <laughs> it's level. You ain't, you ain't going where he going. Yeah, me and him on the same court, but we really not like it's levels. <laughs> it's like it's levels. I'm like yo, this young boy. This young boy is just different. Like it's it's levels, and I was like, I'm going, I'm going back and do some more studying because I ain't going to the league. I, the Kobe the reason I realized thing, I wasn't going to the league. The craziest thing about that story, because you know I was there with you, remember that day. Um, he played on a whole bomb squad, and, and still. But better, the crazy part better, is better than all of you, them. you don't. But you like you don't you didn't notice. The other dudes, like and shout out to our them. homie Mike Jordan was on that team. Yeah, he ran yeah. with Mike. He ran with uh, Malik Allen, who made Malik, it to the yeah. NBA. Yeah, it was other NBA squad. players. But he, yeah. the dude, that we looked at, like yo, yo, we gotta um go to class tomorrow. Like, <laughs> yeah. yo, we can't <laughs> keep cutting class, cutting. Dog, we can't yo, cut class no more because yeah, we, we ain't going to class no more. Like, it's uh, levels, yo, dog. We gotta get bro. education. It ain't gonna work Kobe. out if that's the kind of dudes that's it's going levels, where we're trying to go. Kobe, so. Kobe was at Lower Marion, and uh, I was out. I was out in high school, and uh, I remember he was a senior, and I was a sophomore. So that tells y'all the age difference. I'm the baby of the bunch. You know what I'm saying? I'm still, I'm still not a man yet. It's coming though. A couple of days. <laughs> That's um, what she said. <laughs> and uh, we made it to semis of the states. We faced Lower Marion. Yeah, see, we, was was the city. The, we weren't even allowed to go to states back then. Yo, Not that we would went, but I was in a I was little watching from the bench because I ain't getting no clock. Um yo ball gave us 48 and there was eight minutes left in the game. <laughs> <laughs> yo, but yo, know. he gave us 48. Yo, and what's then, crazy? then I just I just want to say this, yo, shout out to Rip too, like and 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 uh Rasul Suli, because I seen him in the in the summer league uh bang a little bit with Cole. And yo, I, Rip is my man, but you know you duck Bean, yo. Yo, but you, know you duck Bean. You was but, not trying to see Bean at any occasion. Now, what's crazy about that is, right? Like, you know, I'm I, we all out of shape old dudes, right? Men of a certain age. But back in the day in Philly, um, cats would travel for games, and specifically, oh, yeah. specifically work. guys like Kobe from Lower Marion, because it was always this like stigma attached to Kobe. He's soft because he's from the Burbs. So he would come uh, in the city up St. Joe's. He'd come, he would come around the city come and play. St. Joe's. He come down. Diamond you know what I'm saying? Street. So it's like it's, it's it's just interesting, man. So we've seen him from that level, and then ascend to become a global icon. So um, when Dev sent the message in the group chat yesterday, I, like I ignored it because I thought it was like I mean it just wasn't real. Yeah, to me. yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was was fake. News. I ignored it. In fact, I ignored it and then made a joke. I told Hank, I was like, "Yo, chill with these like because you know our brother Hank is um notorious for uh." You know, um, walking Dash, across that line, dastardly, walking across that line, dastardly humor, so making told, light of dark situations. Yes, yeah, so I told Hank, I was like, chill, this ain't he's real. The, he's like, the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> yo, I didn't take it serious at all. I didn't take it serious at all. But you know, I'm always on these tweets, and as the news started coming, man, it was just tough. It was a tough day, man. So, tough day. The, the reality, the reality is, there's people, places, and things from your past at at, at our age where you know it's it's even more than just nostalgia it's like you know it, it it's it's with music and culture this is like the soundtrack to our lives mm-hmm. right so we've seen hip hop grow and no matter how old we get and no matter how far away we get from you know be it what we used to do on the corner stoop or or what we used to do on the playground on the basketball court or the gym this is still a core part of our dna and, and that's why we call it this thing of ours, right? Because basketball is life. Even though it's trash, even though it's trash, Dev still watches every NBA game <laughs> as if it's not trash because there's a loyalty there. And notice I didn't say us, Jimmy. 
because I said, Dad watches <laughs> every game. Like, you know, every I, game. I, I watch a lot of hoops, but and I ain't fall and asleep and on the yeah, couch. Yeah, I watch a lot of hoops. complains. Yeah. But, but the reality is there's so much love in, in that game. And, and that love, I saw that in certain players, man. There's certain guys that play basketball at the NBA level. And I can't prove this, but I feel as though Kobe was one of those guys where it wasn't the money, man. Yeah, but you know what? This, this to me, transcends that, right? Because we've lost people, like, um, from the culture, so to speak, right? We, we've been right. here for, for Big E, for Tupac, for, I mean, even last year for Nip and all that. But this is a little different. Like, this hit me different because not even the, not even the Philadelphia connection. Mm-hmm. It's just one of those things where how it happened, too. Like, I was to tell the dev today. I'm like, yo, this is like some real life Richie Valens type stuff. Like, mm-hmm. this is like some movie stuff. And then when you get the heartbreaking news about, like, you know, what they call it, Mamba Sita, like, Mamba Gigi. Sita. Like, we joke all the time, like, Gigi about to bring the WNBA back. Like, it's just one of those things where I assume that Kobe would she be here forever. Been. We would have we would have watched WNBA games. Just for her. Kobe's we we already there. talked about it. We, we like, we don't watch in... anything WNBA, but if, if <laughs> Bean Porter was there, we'd have watched that since 96. Right? So here, but here's the thing, though. I assume that Kobe would be here. I assume that at some point he would be the owner of the Lakers. I think he'd get an equity stake in the Lakers. These are things that I just like. It, it, this damn, is, this was damn man. I assumed he was going to the big three to bust Joe Johnson ass. No, I, I thought Kobe was going to be an owner. I, I like He's going to watch his daughter bring the WNBA into prominence. Like This just wasn't supposed to happen. And like you said, it's also a, a puts things in perspective too. Yeah. Where like, yo, he's not here today. That's just not. It's not normal. It's not fair. It's, crazy, it's not man. cool. It's one of them some people normal. you look at. You, know, you just look at them as being, you know, indestructible because they're just so famous, so big, so ingrained in everybody's life. It's just weird. Like, one of the it, – it's a lot of perspectives that you can get from this. One is, like, damn, you know, that can happen to Kobe. That can happen to anybody. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Two, you know – most of us do, you know, we're, we're all on that same grind. You know, we all got kids who are playing sports and some, some means of travel, um, you know, the older they get, the farther out they go to play. I know B, I know you about to be on flights, you know, to go do what, what, what you and your son are doing. Um, but it doesn't have to be flights. It don't have to be airplanes. How it, Driving, to, walking to, down to, the street. Uh, I ain't gonna hold you. I got, I got a couple fights coming up. Like you know, for speaking engagement, I'm sitting there thinking, like, <laughs> I don't know, maybe I catch a train or something. But like, right, it's, right. And but then it's, it's like it's, either way, like yeah, accident, either way. So everything is in perspective, and it's kind of like you know when you leave your family, like that family split up because you got too many obligations. So you got to take this one kid here. Wow, somebody else take another kid there. It's like you never know what can happen. I mean, the crazy part about it, I was in the basketball matrix all day yesterday when the news was going down. It's like I'm doing the exact same thing that he was doing when he died. I don't have bread to be doing it on a helicopter. Not on a helicopter, right? But, but we're doing it. Y'all know the y'all know the, the, the roads of the DMV is just as dangerous as a helicopter on a foggy day. <laughs> That might be worse. So, yeah, I'm about to say. So it's like it's all kind of, you know, ways you could put it in perspective, man. Like you say, you start thinking about your own mortality. Um, it, it's just weird. This is why I say on a higher level, because at a lower level, I always preach this just about retirement. When I always tell people, I'm like, yo, y'all waste way too much time being in your feelings about players. We, we can compare players all day. I can think somebody's better than somebody, but that doesn't mean I have to just shit like, on this person personally. Right. right. I can like both of them and think one is better. Like I preach that all the time because I don't understand how people get in their feelings about athletes and entertainers so much where they actually hate them. I have a, a lot of people that I know in my life when Kobe Bryant's name would come up, the first thing they would say is fuck Kobe. Yeah, I'm like, why is it ever that serious? I yeah, never I was understood one. why. I was, was one of them. We also, we also he came around. We came yeah, around. yeah, 81 bought his ass around. <laughs> yeah, 81 <laughs> reasons. Yeah, 81 reasons. To, 81. He had 81 reasons to do a 180. <laughs> 81, right? dog. But, uh, but 81, you know, man. you right, Dev. Like, but that, but the, you know what though? Like, I used to get mad at that, but the more I think about it, right? Um, 
what is fans short for? Fanatic. Fanatic. Like sports fans, mm-hmm. and that's exactly what they are. That's why I don't I don't refer to myself as a fan. I don't call the people that support us fans because to me it has a derogatory connotation, even if not to them. No, but you know what I'm saying so. I I, I, could, I don't have a problem with placing myself in the fanatic. I've always been fanatical about sports, but you've been fanatical I've, about I've the had, sport. I can compartmentalize, not a, not a like yeah, the person, not a player. It's yeah. like. We've argued this person against that person for life, for, for our whole lives. Yeah. How many people have we compared to Kobe? We used to. Right. And, and we do this for a living, so we have to be objective. So if somebody has flaws in their games or something crazy, we talk about it. We talked about Vince Carter not having a left hand for, what, the last 20 years? Yo, we said Dr. J got a hoof. Right. But even when Vince Carter hangs it up in a, in, in a few months from now, I wasn't this grand Vince Carter fan, but I'm going to feel some type of way. It's like everybody who leaves, it's like an end of an era. Like, man, I'm not going to be able to see that no more. The stuff that he used to do. Like, you appreciate these guys instead of like, oh, because my guy is better than him, I'm going to crap on him. It's I the, never it's understood the, it. Because Shout out to the homie Court Bennett because he kind of understood that and he put a post on our page the other day. He's like, now more than ever, I kind of see what Dev means when he when he preaches that to the page. Yeah. I, you know, this, like I said, this yeah. is a higher level. I'm usually just talking about retirement. Like y'all going to miss these dudes when they're gone. Yeah. I mean, um, gone, gone. I, this I, is but, but you, you know, know. To, to, to compare and contrast, you know, the player that has to get compared when we talk Kobe is Mike. And it's like, like Jimmy always said about Man, Mike yeah. is Mike. They did a good job of marketing Mike as the face of the league. So he has this, there's this this relatability. It's false. It's a false relatability versus Kobe, who I don't think people could relate to. They couldn't relate to his work ethic. They couldn't relate to his. But who his can't obsession. respect that though? They, That's why I don't understand why he used to get some but, but it's something to what you're saying. You know, to. But it's also like part of how the league has decided to market itself. Mm-hmm. Like the league has always told you when David Stern, like we market individual players. Individual so the whole player. idea of. The whole idea of the juxtaposition of this player versus that player is how the league grew to what it is. Mm-hmm. Like if you, it is. If you, if you take a step you, back before Jordan, it was like, you know, all the things Dr. that went with – It was Dr. Doc, J and – Dr. J and Larry Bird. And Magic it was Larry and Bird. Bird and Mar- Magic. You know what I'm saying? Bird. Like, and all the things that went with that. Yeah. Like, you know um, – But Col- so- it's almost like Kobe missed his time. It's like he's he's respected because of the chips and, and the accomplishments as a player, but he was never the face of the league – and I feel like it was because they didn't – he wasn't relatable because he was so good, because he was so obsessed. Like, people can't place that in their miserable Dude, lives. But here's the thing. Here's why Kobe – out to LeBron. Because Kobe created something that's going to live forever, which is that, quote, unquote, Mamba mentality. Mamba mentality. Listen, I've been in business meetings and heard dudes, like, make presentations and reference they have Mamba mentality. And they're not – it's not even an athletic event. It's, like, how yeah. they feel about the work they put into – you yeah. know, pre- presenting a pre like doing a presentation. You but know that's what I'm the saying? thing, though, Jim. When he actually came sports. up with that as a theory, as a mentality, like he was doing it to transcend sports. Like, yeah, it's, it's just well, about well, the work. Gonna, it's about his, the, the bottom line is like about putting the work in, work, the work effort. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, doesn't, I agree. People, a lot of people can't relate to that, but I don't see how in any way you can't respect that. I think I think before before it was encapsulated in that branding tool in that Mamba mentality because there wasn't a, a a way to to talk about it and relate it to people. People looked at at Bo as a weirdo. Like he's a weirdo, he and he's trying to and he's trying to be MJ. And MJ is a weirdo. Right? So he's trying to be a weird. He, we don't we don't like him. We can't relate. And they would nitpick at any little thing. <laughs> To, to, to hate him. I, yeah, but I, that's but that's because of MJ though. If MJ doesn't exist, he's treated different. Yeah, it's it's like, like, listen, I agree with that. If yeah. he is, no yeah. matter what they say, the reason is it's like you don't like this man because like what are you saying in your head? Like look at this dude working all hard. Because but but that <laughs> <laughs> but that shows you that shows uh, you the level the level saying. that MJ was see, right. They could be getting some so, so now now getting into modern yeah, times, shooting. LeBron has kind of that same crossover in love that MJ has. Mm-hmm. Like they may have the two biggest hives, uh, for, for lack of a better term, than anybody. So now, when you see other players like a Luka Doncic or anybody younger come mm-hmm. come about, 
the first thing LeBron fans do is the same thing that everybody did to Kobe. It's the same thing. Like history repeats itself. Mm-hmm. But um, it but the fact of the matter is, like you you can't deny someone's talent. Like yo, and 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 that's what I that's why I really don't take it too serious. People do this whole thing yeah. where they hate on somebody else because if you hate on somebody else to big your guy up, but you always bringing this person up, yeah. What you're doing it's is really, you're, giving them, you're, you're giving them a compliment. Exactly. Yo, I, I, I'll go on record, and I probably have already said this before previously on a number of occasions, but for real, yo, dude is the second greatest basketball player I ever saw. He's the second greatest. He's the second best. Uh, he might be. Yeah, I qualify, because I know when people, like, on your video you did on your own and this, like, they're going to they're gonna miss the fact that you said saw. Like saw, yeah, 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 yeah. He's Saul. talking about with so, his own eyes, dude. Because so, you know, we we still we know what we know what Sasquatch. I mean, at, at least at least was. two of us are we of the opinion him. that Will didn't exist. Though. So <laughs> so when you got to qualify that maybe he was and maybe he wasn't, I didn't see that. Um, yeah, he's the he's definitely the second best. Um, and from a skill perspective, I qualify this. I think Michael Jeffrey Jordan was the best basketball player ever. But I think Kobe was the most skilled basketball player ever. Like skill for skill, there just was no weakness in dude. There and wasn't. for me, when it comes to basketball, everyone knows who's read Sports the Book. Um, I don't believe in best or greatest. I just think it's a table of gods. And I think both mm-hmm. of them sit at that table. Mm-hmm. Um, One at the head. And uh, this, like also even talking about the debate about his basketball game, it seems weird to me right now. Yeah. So I, I didn't want to get into that, but um, you know, because those debates always make people trash somebody else. Like, yeah, I just you think do that, not have to trash LeBron to say Kobe was great. I just think this is yeah. like um, do not have to trash. This is Kobe an event that LeBron. none of us will ever forget. Yeah. Um, like I said, this is a little bit different than like any of the other uh, deaths that we've even with Mike. This is still a little different than Mike. Like, you know, you know why though, Jim? I think a big, I mean, I'm not speaking for you. Why, in my opinion, this hits different besides the fact that, you know what I'm saying? We met dude when we were young, watched his whole career play out, basically being the same age. I think it hits a little bit different because when we think about the people that we did grieve over, like, because when Mike died, I sat in the house and watched Michael Jackson videos all weekend crying off and on like my cousin died same thing last night like I was too tired to go anywhere today like because I sat up all night basically punishing myself Dog, watching all of this Kobe that's what coverage. I was going to ask y'all like what's wrong punishing with that? myself I was torturing my I even text you like yo I gotta get off I said I gotta yeah. cut you I, first of all I don't even watch ESPN because it's trash I, yeah, yeah I don't watch Fox yeah, Sports because it's trash you know, I, watched all I don't watch any of the trash it was and I found myself on Twitter looking up hashtags, looking up videos and pictures. Yeah, I was drunk. Then I couldn't cut off ESPN. I'm like, why am I torturing myself? Yeah, but I, I, mean, could, truthfully, I couldn't stop. I, truthfully, I couldn't that's, that's the main reason that it took us 24 hours to do this. I, I didn't want to – I mean, it doesn't matter. If it happened, it happened because yeah. you know, it happened with everybody out there. But I didn't really want to be on this, John, just breaking down every so second. I, I'm trying I couldn't to talk. even do it. Yesterday, when we tried to do it, like, we first I set up, I was like, I ain't, I ain't <laughs> doing it. Like, I can't. So no, so back to my point though. The reason I think this hits harder, like even with Mike, even the way I felt about Mike, with Prince, with Whitney, all of those people. If you think about it, there was something in the mix that they did that kind of brought about yeah, their own death. Yeah, true. This was just true. some freak accident on the way this man travels right. every day for the past ten, fifteen years. Travel to the game and, and the fact. That his little one was with him and yeah. some other people. And rest in who peace. Probably don't family. ride on yeah. helicopters every day. Rest in peace to that family too, man. Yeah, even, rest in peace. Even when hearing the rest of that story to me up this morning, when you said that it was a it was a mother and a father who was, had a daughter who was a teammate and they got three other kids or something like that, like right. yeah, right. it's just heartbreaking, man. So, like I said, so it wasn't really a self destructive nature to this. Kobe looked like we've seen Kobe. Throughout his whole career, we've seen his his highs and lows, a lot of highs. So we've seen him happy on the basketball court. But somebody that we know had like a robotic approach to the game. And we thought, we always thought, I know I always thought, I'm speaking, I keep speaking for everybody. I know I always thought like somebody like Kobe, when he retired, he's going to be miserable. He's going to be a noodle, yeah. He seems happy. seemed to find his stride in, in creativity, production, business, production, production and right being a father. Yeah, man. Being a father. It was kind of like we said with Big. Like, right before Big died, it seemed like he was in his best space. 
hypnotized video. He's smiling and playing yeah. around. I've Court, never according seen to that like trash that. movie, he called everybody he knew and apologized to him. <laughs> right. So it's like it's, it's like Shout out to gravy though. That's my guy. It's hard to see somebody go one when they're in such a good space. Two when you know they did nothing to bring this on, just a freak accident. And then, like I said, the, the icing on the cake is the, the the little girl that we've seen him with. That you was know, countless that was times the, recently because that, that she's the favorite. one that yeah she's yeah. the one that's taken on the mantle. Little Mambasita, the boy he obviously you know couldn't make boys. You know, always thought when when that kind of stuff happened, that's kind of like <laughs> punishment for your sins. Yeah. Um, um, shout out to me having twin girls. Um, uh, definitely his favorite though, man. But yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I didn't want to say that because I, you know, in case cases. Because you don't want to name, you don't, you don't want to name who your favorite is. But we don't do that alone. Because <laughs> <laughs> both of y'all got a favorite, but I ain't gonna put y'all. Uh, anyway, but uh, I know, I know, I know who Def better say his favorite is the boss of the crib. Uh, no, she she plays no me. games. Anyway, um, the, the crazy part about man. this man is is. It's just tough, man. Like, yeah, yo. y'all, y'all see us smiling and laughing. It, it, it hasn't piece. been like this. No, it definitely has. It's a piece of us, man. It's a and piece of me, us. I can tell you why. Like, like I said, I, throughout this business, I've always tried to keep it objective. You know, like I said, if somebody, if I'm thinking somebody's better than somebody, I, I feel no need unless we just in total joke mode. I don't need to trash anybody else. Yeah, I feel something when all of these dudes retire. You know what I'm saying? Like when LeBron go, I'm gonna be thinking the same thing. I'm like, yo, all y'all dudes that hated on LeBron, like, yo, the I league feel, is gonna, feel, the league feel, is gonna, it's gonna be I, some something taken away from the league when dude retires, and y'all gonna I feel be like, something, damn, I wasted twenty I, years hating. I, I, I feel something. something. I feel I something, something. With, uh, with, with with Vince Carter retiring. Yeah, That's I just what, when you kind of took a time when we were talking. B. Austin, about him. B. Austin is such a mic stand. He's one of the people we talk about. He hate on anybody that gets uh, the ascension. Now that I think about it. That's why I ain't like Kobe. As a yeah, bro. yeah, because I'm like, too close. That's why he hate Brian. But then, no, but the Brian way, but the though. way I know B. Austin is a fan because you, you know he has two kind of players. He either just likes some random ass cats that <laughs> that got solid games, or gunner overstate what they do, or he like gunning ass dudes. So it's like the whole time we used to have our back and forth. I'm like, it's all good. There ain't no way this dude gonna keep. Disliking this ball, they count, like, kind of they count, kind of they count points. They count points at the end of the game. Exactly. My favorite kind of <laughs> player. <laughs> my favorite kind of player is dudes with irrational confidence, like dudes who like <laughs> who you can't tell that they're not like a you know ten time NBA All Star because they carry shout themselves out, that way. Shout out to FV, uh, FV, Yo, uh, FVF. My guy Spencer, nice. Spencer <laughs> Dumb Liddy. <laughs> Dumb Liddy. It was my man in Toronto too, at a point guard in Toronto. FVF. Yo, Fred Van Fleet. Van yo, you Lee. can't tell Van Fleet that he not a 15-time All-Star. That's my guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, Kobe was one of them. But, uh, so why you don't like Mike? Mike's confidence was out. I know. See, that's the thing. That's the thing. I don't dislike Mike. I, the thing is, that's the crazy part. I even said he's at the table of gods, but because I just won't proclaim that he's the greatest, people say I don't like him. It's always like that, I like, man. I like, like the I joke said. on his gear, but, I mean, his gear no, is what he does I it's bring this up every time we have these the like girls. and dislike conversations, man. I just I will never forget the day. Yeah, let's keep it a bean. I don't dislike none of them dudes. I don't know them. Yeah, I, <laughs> for me, it's like I, it's, I've never, I'll never forget the day that on a social media conversation, on two different threads of the conversation, I was called a Brian sexual and a Brian hater in the That's same the post <laughs> because you're not allowed to. That was a he moment. That was a moment of victory. That was a yeah. moment of victory, and it, it was. Just, That's why I, as I, we I go through off, it all the time. I love it. As we sign off, because we we got to get out of here, yo. We'll score eighty one, man. Yeah, but no, the, the reason like this, I can't it, score eighty one on two K. You know how hard that is. <laughs> I can't score eighty one on five sc- dead people. You give me. A, I'm about to say you give me an hour in the gym right now, and I can't score eighty one if I'm just in the gym by myself. But yeah. I got three players who probably on the same level for me as my favorite players of all time. And, you know, I ain't Kobe, one of them is Kobe, Mike, and, and Allen Iverson. Like, I mean, as far as favorites go, those are the three dudes. So, you know, you take one of them out, any yo, of them out in some tragedy like this, like, I'm going to feel it this is probably, as if they were a family it's member. Probably, it's probably, favorite. It's probably we got the same trend. It's, pro- it's probably inappropriate, but we did. We probably did believe that AI was going to go before. 
<laughs> Stop, cuz. <'cause>, oh, <laughs> but AI is AI. AI is a dude that like. For I'm, me, I'm a cry. I'm I'm def. I'm going to the yo, funeral. For me, um, obviously, like everybody knows, like Magic, because Magic made me fall in love with basketball. Kareem, right. just because I like the way Kareem carries himself and and his Bubba Chuck. Word. Um, I love Kobe because he's I'm, I'm obviously I, I grew up a Lakers guy. I love Kobe. Um, but it's just. Man, like all these dudes are like superheroes, man. Like, yeah, it, it ain't about Marvel. Like, I, yo, my superheroes were athletes, man. Like, so this yeah, is, yeah, this is and crazy. Athletes, man. athletes, and rappers. And, and you know, the funny thing man. is, I joke all the time on our podcast about Kobe, like not letting anybody forget him. And I even made a joke this last week. Yeah, I was like, did it now? Yeah, I made a, I made a joke this last week, right? I was like, Ron, like Kobe. Went from, I said Kobe went from being like, um. You know, uh, one of these guys who was irritating me to it being funny. I literally just made this joke right yeah, last week. I yeah, I was like, now it's funny. I was like, because he's out here doing things so much so we won't forget his name that is actually pretty funny to me now. Um, uh, And now, man, damn. Uh, I ain't, now he really done did it. Cool. Yeah, he really done did it at this point. But um, you know what I'm you know what I'm sad about? Because in 2020, we're going to get one of the most legendary Hall of Fame classes that we've ever seen. And we're not going to get that overly dramatic mamba mentality speech dog i mean he was going to be the star of the night regardless but now now i think it's actually going to take away from and overshadow tim duncan kevin garnett because no matter you know what they do and how great their speech is first of all you know they're going to say something about kobe then you know the Memorial is gonna be there. I'm probably not. I'm probably it's not gonna, gonna overshadow watch. their whole night. Gonna watch. You know what I'm saying? At least but, not live. See that? Probably. But you know what? It's sad. To I me wanted to see all of them do. I know his speech. Do their speeches. Hug Kobe, each other. Kobe was gonna try to outdo Mike's speech. Because that's what he does. What he's a, he's, he's, that's he's what I'm saying. We're not gonna, gonna get that overly dramatic. <laughs> and he was gonna give us so many Tony Robbins type quotables. He was gonna be out there talking about the mama mentality and the work mm-hmm. and. He's gonna motivate the world. I like I knew that would like that was gonna be a thing. Like, and that's what but I'm saying. It, but it was gonna go from us being able to be assholes and joking about it to now like we're gonna be there yeah, like, yeah. Probably yeah. crying and, like and, that, and but but that's another thing. Like I I told I was telling David I'm I'm like, I was like, yo, up, this whole cool. this whole season is ruined for me because it's hard for me to watch game. This game's on the night, it's hard for me to watch game's on now, but I I don't wanna it's hard for me to watch them because that's what they're talking about, right? <sighs> and it's yeah. like I know the All Star Game is coming up. There'll be a tribute. It's like you got to deal with the emotion all over again. Not that Last you want to just like everything's forget. a trigger, man. I never Trust thought I'd be mind. triggered by a twenty four second violation. Yeah, like what is that? Usually I'm hollering like pass the damn ball. Now I'm like I'm I'm balling because of a twenty four second. Yeah, violation. man. And then I know like so think about this. All Star Break's coming up. It's gonna be a, that's gonna be a trigger for you. Then the Hall of Fame nominee, another trigger for you. This whole year is ruined, dog. I just want to get to twenty twenty one. <laughs> Quick, man. rest in peace, Yo, cool. man. Rest in peace, man. Yeah, man. All I gotta say, yeah, rest in power, man. And um, eighty one. No. There's, there's. I mean, there's plenty more to to be said. Um, y'all just make sure y'all tune in to the live show uh, this Thursday from six to eight. You know, we gonna dedicate the whole show uh, to Kobe Bryant, even though Super Bowl fifty four is going on this week. Nobody care. I, exactly. I'm like. <laughs> I'm Super Bowl is this week, and like I don't, I don't want to watch no football. Like they gonna do something too, like because yeah, the thing is, everybody, everybody. That, but that's that's the kind of legacy he's leaving. That yo, Jimmy, the whole soccer world is doing something for dude, and that's what I'm he saying, dog. Soccer fan. Yo, but as, as polarizing as he was to the fans, though, he's a god to these this current generation of NBA players. They don't know Mike. They ain't he's, see Mike. He's their Mike. Right, like see Demar Derozan. They was like, "What would they's like? What did Kobe mean to you? Everything. I wouldn't everything. even be here." I'm like, "Yo, your pop." Yo, Marcus Morris <laughs> says Superman ain't supposed to die. Damn, cuz. Like, yeah, like, stop that. You gotta chill, man. <laughs> he's, he is he is God to these dudes in the league. Like, and like I had a conversation with a you know a couple of our friends before, and somebody mentioned to me said that like Kobe didn't have the respect of his peers. I was like, I don't know if I know a player who had no that's respect that, for that's not players. that's that's ridiculous yeah I, I don't know a player who had more respect but for you know this this is the other reason how you know we getting up there dog because we got steven jackson losing all kinds of manhood when he talked yo, about kobe prior to his death dog steven and, jackson and steven said jackson yesterday like yo, like yo steven jackson said yesterday like you the only player that i literally feared 
He said, I feared you. He don't say stuff like that. Yo, yo, he said, don't say nothing like that. Boy said, you my role she- model was my pop and you. Yo, Steven Jackson will beat you up for implying that he was afraid of a player. Yo, it's, it's crazy, right? Because, man, it's just... Steven that's, that's, Jackson that's will never say anyone is better than him. That's a bad take right there. Mike. But, you know, here's my point. My point is, like, we're getting so old, right? Um, This is a joke, but it's true that... Some of these guys that are in the league now, a lot of older guys, Kobe is that guy. But now there's guys who are in the league who don't even remember Kobe. Hmm. Like, they was talking to Zion. I didn't realize that Zion wasn't, wasn't. Yeah. born yeah. when Kobe won his first chip. Mm-hmm. He wasn't even born yet. Damn. So his his guy growing he's up was LeBron. LeBron. He's a yeah, Bron guy. guy. And I'm like, oh, so now the guys coming in are Bron guys because they're that young. I'm like, damn. That's how it is. Bron has Kobe is like old to them. coming in now. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Kobe had dudes that were – Born in the early nineties, yeah, maybe mid nineties, um, maybe maybe even seeing him at the cusp of his prime, but their dads probably you know the ones who had dads right. Damn, watch this. <laughs> <laughs> watch this. Damn huh? <laughs> you got you got to do it. Um, but yeah, it, it, yeah, again, it hits different, man. It hits way different, man. And that's the thing, because of his age, I don't think any of the guys that are twenty is drawn. Any of those dudes that are at the table with him, right? So Mm -hmm. if a Kareem goes, a Magic, a Mike, any of those dudes, it won't hit the same. Because because these are icons, but yeah. First of all, if Magic go, it's like we expected that twenty years ago. (laughs) (laughs) We've been waiting. What took so long? Like, yo, who would have thought? And this is not even trying to be funny. Yo, Magic outlived Kobe, (laughs) because. I don't know. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. Yo, sorry. So, so like, like I said, y'all, um, <laughs> and trust us, man. We we sitting here. Oh, this is this is how we cope. This is this is how we cope. Like we gotta party hey, we gotta be assholes about something. Yo, this is how we cope. We gotta laugh. Oh man. Because what's been happening in the past 24 hours with us, it's not us, and it's it's just unusual and. Yo. and the mood around war room sports has, has never been like this before. Oh. Real talk. But like I said, to, to, to hear more on our little Kobe coverage and our thoughts and um, even some of the thoughts of our callers and some people who contribute to our show, just make sure you check out the live show uh, this yeah, Thursday oh, 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern time. If you can't catch the live show, you can always go to warroomsports.com and catch the, the pod. Um, so yeah, we we're gonna sign it out, man. Uh, one more for the Mamba, twenty four, number eight, eighty one. Rest in power. Rest in power, dog. <laughs> rest in peace. Rest well, good brother. We love you. Um, this has been the saddest episode of Inside the War Room that we've ever had to do, um, but we had to Word. do it just for the homie. Um, so we're gonna sign off now. Peace. Check y'all on the rebound. Peace. Oh, no.